Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Battle Supreme. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. We got a uh, album versus album banger episode lined up for you today. Another one. And another notch. Another one. Oh. Another one for the fourth time. An action packed extravaganza of an album versus album today. You can bet so. your bottom dollar. But beforehand, <laughs> remember do your thing. Like, subscribe, follow the channel, leave us a rating review on the podcast land. God bless you. We love you. Mm. Yeah. On deck for the battle today, Battle Supreme, that is. <laughs> Rushes, a farewell to Kings. Mm. Farewell. Tasty. Versus <laughs> Yeses. Fragile. 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 Whatever you have it, however you serve it, it's a banger. Certified. Bonafide. Fragile. Absolutely right. Fragile. All right. Starting out. Starting out. Track one out of <laughs> Fragile. Hit a little roundabout. Oh, man. What? What can you say? What can you not say? Talk you know? about opening tracks. Brother. <laughs> this is just a classic. It's probably their biggest song. I mean, I know they had like their popular ones later. Yeah. That may have topped at I think, the time. I think, I think Lone, uh, Owner of a Lonely Heart is probably their biggest there is, song. That is their biggest song. But I think this is their most classic song, if that's yeah. like, if there's yeah. a difference. It definitely and, sounds like an era, you know? Yeah. And in the more like the recording of it, what's the word? It's like, you know, like... It's a prog anthem. Prog rock world. Like, yeah. That's, it's yeah, like an anthem. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's kind of what they're really in. Like, yeah. Honor of the Lonely Heart is like crossover song a little bit, but like, yeah. you know, their fan base and most people look at them as like the prog rock band. All the prog, prog rock gods. bands went through that new wavy, like, let's see what we could do with the drums and all this effects. Yeah. and do, 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 do. Yeah. And just like adding all the synths. Like all these bands did it. Rush did it. A Genesis, God, you know what I mean? Uh, it's the time. You yeah, know, they yeah. might have been the forefront of that. Um, yeah, maybe. And Yes did it, you know? And a lot of them did that stuff. So <clears throat> we tend to talk about the early albums with these bands. But yeah, they're still Roundabout. good. Roundabout is so epic. Yeah. Oh, dude. Having learned it, you realize, like, man, they wrote it. <laughs> it's just like, damn. And then, you know. We performed it. Yeah. My favorite part of the whole song is when they go you could teach a, you could teach a whole entire bass master class on that song alone oh, everything yeah. dude don't 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 and then tone is just just with the drum the drums and the bass are so just like in sync especially in the like in the in the chorus, in and around, like the so tight. Do, 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 the solo, the do, do, that do, do, that same do, section do, do, with the organ solo, like with that chorus. Yeah, they do rhythm the, section. Do, 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 oh yeah, and then it's just Rick Wakeman. They switch to like a really heavy backbeat. Yeah, and then and the whole just like, it just elevates it to the it's like the next chapter of the solo. Yeah, so sick. Yeah, good classic tune. Yeah, classic. Ah. On the side of Rush. Title track, Farewell to Kings. What a way, like what an angelic way like to start a record. Now, oh my god. Just started with that stoic acoustic guitar line yeah. from Alex Lifeson. Just da 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 It's so crisp. It was recorded outside. Was, was it, it really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Once they, and then they add just like all the instrumentation from... The, yeah, the whistles or whatever it is, the bells, flutes or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, that. dude. It just like just lifts you up, and you're like, ah, and all of a sudden, fucking. Yeah, this might be. It's honestly one of my favorite Rush songs ever. Same. Yeah, and I just love the the chorus. It's just like cities full of hatred, fears, and lies. Yeah, they just hold this whole song is just like 
It's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. It's just a masterpiece. It sets the tone for the album. It does. In Rush fashion, they tell a story while doing it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Ode to Neil Peart. R.I.P. Yes. <sighs> it's, it's great. Great <laughs> opening tune, dude. All right. On Fragile, we got Cans of Brands. Do they have those um like what's on there? Is that just the the piano with like different It sounds like a I thought they have those... What about those like uh those Dulcimer? They're, they're like drums. Uh with the murmurs and stuff? Yeah. Xylophones? They sound yeah. like they sound like the drums like uh like in uh, Caribbean music kind of like ding, 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 Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Steel pants? Steel, steel pants. Steel actually. drums, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any steel pants on it. It kind of has that but yeah, tone, though. It's because of the you mixture I mean? of everything that's happening. I feel that, yeah. That's what I always thought. But really yeah. punchy sound, like... New take on, like, a classical yeah. style of song. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's cool. Just a pure instru- uh, instrumental piece. Yeah, it sounds like just straight-up classical music, almost. Yeah. That's what it is. It's Brahms. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Brahms. What see. does that mean? It's a composer. Is it a composer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never but it's mind. Brahms and, what is it, Brahms and Cans or something? Yeah. It's Cans and Brahms. Cans and Cans Brahms, and Brahms. Yeah. I see. Ah. Oh. Light bulb. Dude. Now this. I might I might say this a lot on this album because I love this album. But I think everyone here knows, like, this is probably my favorite Rush song ever. Xanadu, bro. Oh, dude. Xanadu is just a whole, just start to finish, just certified banger just taking you on a whole journey it's dude. epic just starting just swelling mm, hitting that e major vibe it sounds like you're about to watch a swelling movie swelling up yeah you know it feels like you watched a movie when you're <laughs> done listening to it classic alex lifeston when he has like uh like uh plays with the volume pedals on the turn yep. oh my god then just like coming in with the freaking with the bells. Yeah, but... I will say when uh, on the radio when this song was on, this song was on my way home from work the day uh, Neil Peart passed, and man, dude, brought a tear to my eye at the end when the and like the drums start like marching. That's so fire, man. Yeah, dude, that Beautiful whole song. That's probably my favorite bass line of all time. Just the do 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 boo. It's the badass part. One of the longest riffs I've ever heard in my entire yeah. life. I remember me and Al always try like thinking that when we were young. Like so, when we like, first heard that song, ends, we're like, dude. dude, this riff is crazy. It just never it ends, sick. dude. Yeah. But even just like the lyrics and the whole like song, it's like it's telling you. Like he wants to dine and like on the honey dude, he's fasting for it in the first verse and yeah. he's like, Keep going, I'm gonna drink the milk of paradise. Yeah. And then by the end of it he's like, I've dined yeah. on it, I've drunk it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like an epic journey of a song. Again, Neil Pert, just the lyrics just I For know. I have dined on honeydew and drank the milk of paradise. Dude. I think, yeah. I think that it's about Chess like the, piece. the found the youth. It's from a book. I know that. I forget the the book exactly. Yeah, a lot of a lot of his lyrics are from like books he's read on the road Big and other stuff. I know what was Total it? Twenty one twelve was the fountain. I think was it? That was the whole album was uh, like off of the based off of that or something. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, no, this song just epic. Uh, Close to my heart. This is a good song. It's awesome. Okay, uh, we have heaven. Love that song. Yeah, little was a minute thirty. Tell the moon, tell the moon, tell the moon. All the vocals just, just coming around, in, the rounds and rounds, and rounds, and rounds and going. going in like every ear. Yeah, it's a really cool little piece. It just has that like one, two, three, one, two, and like you can like swing with it, but like it has a weird feel. But it has that big like, is it organ or is it guitar? It's like really it drops to the, gnarly, the low note. Gnarly guitar, yeah, it signifies the chord changes. It's yeah. Just like, because doesn't it start the in the change. G major? It's like, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Then it goes to the E minor. E minor. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it goes to another chord, and then it resolves. He is here. It's another album that like takes you on a whole like 
thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I love that song so much. It's so good. It's so unique. Like, you don't hear songs like that. It's it almost sounds like it'd be something that would be on like a Jay Dilla album. Yeah. It's like a it's like a. If they're like samples, yeah. Yeah, like a loops, sample. It's loops. Yeah. Yeah, Super you're right. Cool. Super like, like unique loop. for the for the time. Like to have a song that's just like that. Like that's that's amazing. <clears throat> Hell yeah. Now this song quite possibly might be Rush's best, like, I don't know. Like, they have epics. They're really good at making epics, but, like, this might be their most well-crafted, like, just song-writing song. You it's know closer I mean? to the heart. Close to the heart. Yeah. It's just, it's the very, like, don't bore us song. It doesn't have all the flashiness. Yeah. But, like, every part of this song counts from beginning to end, dude. Yeah. And Definitely. it's another song, lyrically, that's just so, like, profound. So Everything sick. about Rush, man. And Dude. I mean, yes, too, really. But like lyrically, these bands are just like gospel, dude. Like it just sounds so good. It's just like epic of just like beholding like. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like the men who hold high places, triumphant, like must sounds. be the one to start. Yeah. To mold a new reality closer to the heart, dude. That's what I'm saying. Sure. I remember learning that in your basement, Al. Yeah, dude. Think about it, David. Learning how to play closer to the heart on the old acoustic, dude, in the Monster Mash. Yeah, dude. So That's cool. crazy. Yeah, dude. Black, or was it Blacksmith and the Artist? Yeah. These months learned their art to forge a creativity closer to the heart. As I'm saying, dude. Then it has the break, and it's just the bells. The and then it just starts slapping with the with the drums. And it's like, yeah, oh. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And the, the, the solo it. section, dude, it's like a really short, there. sweet. Da, 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 yeah, da, 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 Yeah, dude. And it comes back in, dude. And you finally Beautiful. have the payoff, fucking. Then you have him doing the boom, doom, 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 doom. Yeah, dude, this song's just so good. It's like what, fucking two and a half minutes? Yeah, it's like it under, it's short. like under three minutes. Yeah, it's like two it's and a half crazy. minute song, dude. It's, it's so just crazy. Like, yeah, it, how something can accelerate and then come back, and like you can just go through a whole ride in that amount of time, like that, to that like degree, is the, just awesome, man. The one thing Talent. I'll say about Rush is like, there's bands that make long songs you know what i mean but you can't make long songs this is just my opinion you can't make long songs if the parts aren't fucking important but it's mm -hmm. like they waste no time and they don't expend no time it's like every part is calculated yeah and it grows and it's like it's that it's long the, on purpose it's there Very for a reason purpose. yeah there's yeah. not it's still lean like there's they trimmed all the fat and it's still long but it's like everything's important yeah. But then when they wrote this song, they're like, there's no need for that. You know what I mean? That just goes to show they're fucking, they know. Yeah. They know the vibe, you know? The crafting. <sighs> Taking up a little notch <laughs> on the side of Fragile, we got South Side of the Sky, dude. Love this guitar riff so much, man. Yeah, it's great guitar. I love Steve Howe on this. I love Steve Howe on this whole album. Yeah, he plays, down, it's like a... But he's like, it's like a '50s guitar player. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's why I got to put man. I love, I love the both these guitar players. But my personal playing that I, like an influence I hear so much with uh, Steve Howe with because like you said like the rockabilly stuff like yeah. it almost sounds like '50s, but it's like in space. <laughs> it but is it's like it's 50s rockabilly. In space. Yeah, it's so That's good, right. man. It's so he, doesn't cool. Does he play a big hollow body? Yeah, he plays a yeah whole whole ass Gibson hollow body. Just ripping it to shreds, dude. <laughs> it's awesome. And then he plays the acoustic and does like the clap and stuff. Like he's Million just so so away. good. Yeah. Yeah, but that riff's just so sick because it's just like in between everything, he's just fucking shredding, dude. Yeah. The guitar fills. Yeah. It's like a blues song. It sounds like they would be drum fills, but yeah, their guitars like just like the weird little like dinners. everywhere, dude. Yeah. It's nonstop. It's amazing. Anywhere, awesome. anytime, in time. It's crazy. Yeah. And then it breaks down into that part, and you hear the stairs. Like, the guy's, like, walking down the stairs, and you hear the door. Yeah, the door shut. And then the piano comes in. They go through that whole section, and then they just come back in with that riff slamming again. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great a great tune. Ah. Oh. What we got next, Al? What we up next? Uh, taking it down a notch. 
Little Cinderella man, dude. Cinderella, Cinderella man. <laughs> well, it's not really. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's in betweener. I think the yeah. next song is more it's the more, soft song, yeah. but this one's an in betweener because it has that sweet, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it has that cool like rhythm with the bit. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, this solo section in this song is really different. Yeah, like honestly, like they go into this like Facts. funky like and and like Getty underneath. Like you have Alex Lyson just just Doing shredding it. balls. Like is every once in a while, like he have ones that mm. you could tell he ruts, and he has other ones that he just, just going goes nuts. off. Yeah, yeah. dude. And this That's what I love. Yeah. Yeah, this one I feel like during this solo session, you could tell like maybe they were live in the room and they were just fucking jamming. Yeah. And. I don't know what Getty's doing, but I know he had this style where um, he was never a slapper, but he would do like flamenco guitar style with his bass, like with his nails. He'd be like, that's how we yeah. get the like yeah. very attacky, slappy tone. Hmm. But yeah, he, but either way, like regardless, like a Getty's like such a heavy handed like on his right hand like yeah. he's fucking digging in dude like <clears throat> yeah. more than like a lot of bass players i think that's where i get a lot of my heavy head gotta from. pop he pops so he's playing upright bass almost well yeah, yeah like they, they yeah. really gotta pull Those the strings pop, you know? yeah it's... yeah so he's just not like light on getting that he's just like fucking he's shredding dude punching down yeah. yeah and just like really digging in get that nice like up mid-rangey tone yeah dude dude's a freak but yeah no that's a good song Let's see. Cinderella man. <laughs> Take it while you can. Honestly, I always skip they this song. They don't understand. What's up? I always skip this song. Really? You don't like the song? It's all right. It's not It's not the strongest tune on the album, but the solo section it is wasn't something my to mention. Song. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan of the vocal part and oh, the lyrics. Man. I think Cinderella Man's kind of silly, you know? No, I agree. It's definitely not the strongest track. So you're just talking about all these epic things, and now it's like Cinderella Man. Like, what's going on? I was uh, the movie with Russell Crowe. That's a good movie. <laughs> That's yeah, a good movie. Yeah, <laughs> the boxer in the Great Depression. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Cinderella Man. Jeez. Bro. So, so whenever I listen to this song, I always think of that movie. I got so you, I change it. it makes How me about a little Cinderella Man? man. Cinderella, Cinderella Man. man. Cinderella <laughs> Man. Cinderella <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh shit. Jesus. Who's walking who? You know. What is it? Fragile. Five percent for nothing. I have to hear how it goes. Come on, dude. No, I know this song. I just gotta do a little refresher real quick. Oh, it's just a little just a little interlude. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, I wasn't even aware that of the name of that. I always just knew well, it's it. It's like a segue. It's and, just yeah. yeah, it's just a little interlude. We can skip forward on it's that one. Got some one. good cordage in there though. Well, it goes into long distance. And then it goes into long distance, yep. Which is a banger, dude. It's one of my, yeah, this is one of my favorite bass lines. It's one probably of my, ever. It's one of my, if not my favorite, yes song. It's a really good one. Yeah, but I got, but I include the fish with that, even though it's not technically, but it's like it's, still it's a package deal yeah, it's song. Close. It's kind of like the equivalent to Zeppelin, you know. Yep. With Live and Lovin' and the other Every one. time I hear that guitar lick, like, off the beginning of the song, it sounds like video game music to me. Totally. I've always, like, totally. this sounds like video game music, which I think is a cool thing, you yeah. know? But I always think that. I don't know why. I'm just, yeah. like, it just sounds like something you hear Dude, in, like, an old video that. game, you know? I always felt that way. It reminded me of things I would hear when I would play the Sega Genesis <laughs> as a kid at my grandma's. Like, yeah, like Sonic. Sonic, yeah. Sonic, dude, yeah. Yeah, it has, like, That's that like, vibe. Like, the coins, like, different, like, things, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Like it's so slinky, but yet it's still so tight. Yeah. You know, like the way just the way the guitar part lays in with the drums and bass parts. Which is wild. Yeah, and then it just like breaks down like on a dime, dude. Yep. Yeah. 
Like it's not yeah. It's, I still yeah. remember yeah, the that dream is crazy. there. I still <laughs> remember <laughs> the time. But the first time you had the guitar just doing with the chord with the bass. It and the second time he's playing it. The sun, right? Yeah, the next Dude, time he's, he's playing the riff. Yeah, yeah, while right. the bass is doing the it's chord so changes. Sick, yeah. And then the and drum then part's weird too. The organ. Yeah, it, everything yeah. gets like yeah. Hello, like and then well, everything seems so amazing. smooth and fast. And now it's like, hold on a second, let's focus in here. Yeah, they really hone in. It almost sounds like they're running wild, but then they know exactly where they're at. And they snap back yeah. in. Yeah. Well, if you see if you see it as kind of a package deal, we'll just go into the fish since we're already here. I say that just because just I, always, I always I always hear them, it's and like, I hear it on the radio. I heard it on the radio on. Uh, What's well, it's mastered to go in together? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, like it flow goes in. together. Yeah. yeah. And then into that that whole section is just unbelievable. This with is the, with the like percussion and everything. Oh just yeah, starts dude. Moving. Dude, check this shit out. This is what I was talking about. I was telling Frank. So, I mean, I listened to Fragile a hundred billion times in my entire life, mm-hmm. and I've I've I said I have listened to them in my AirPods before, but the first time I listened to them in closed ear headphones ever, like honestly, yeah. was last week, and this song specifically. You know, may may have a little reefer in me. You know, part, <laughs> partly enhanced it a little bit, but point being, yeah, you feel that shit. No, but I never like you heard. Do. I never. No, I actually like genuinely. I've never heard that song like that. Like that one specifically. The panning, like just put it on some earphones and listen to that tune, dude. And you just have the. And I was telling Frank, we thought maybe there's guitars on there, but I don't know. I gotta do some more research. When I heard it, like I think that's all bass on that song. Even that riff, that all of dude, its right? bass, dude. I'm telling you, Could I be, I, mean, I think it is. I, I would believe it's just it. bass and drums. You got on the right ear the hard do 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 do. I know for a fact that's bass. Yeah, I'm talking about the. I think that's bass, dude. I might be totally wrong. But just the way it sounded with the headphones on. That's what it sounded. Unless it's a very. Maybe a baritone guitar. It might be. And then on the right you got. Bang, bang, bang. It's, yeah it's just unbelievable like the rhythm just gets in your veins and that song is just crazy yeah or maybe and, you were hearing because you had the headphones on maybe you were hearing like the hollow bodiness of the guitar i might be wrong that's what i'm riffs, saying but like, it sounded like, like to me really in the hearing moment. the bass of the guitar but i know too. there's a lot of overdub mm-hmm. bass on that song it's not just one bass track there's that definitely song more is hot, in there though, dude it's like boiling water like yeah dude but the well, one it's almost like a that. james brown riff yeah at a certain point yeah it's almost like hypnotic they're really, they're really cooking but it just gets like stronger, like the momentum just goes so crazy. Yeah, it's man. almost like paranoia insanity. Yeah. And I was like laying back in my chair and all of a sudden you hear the no nah, nah, and it was literally like well we're on video so I could do this now. It was literally coming from like here and then just going around the back of your head. And then it would like come back around and it was honestly I never heard it like that before. Yeah. You know, maybe I only heard it in my car or if we're chilling in the basement. I just wasn't really listening it like that. Yeah. But no, nah, it was honestly a cool experience. Dude. It was wild. I love that song. I, I say love like, that so much, man. Perception changing. I don't know about life changing. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, I never heard that song. Right like off that, of. Uh, it was awesome. Life. Yeah. Right off of. Right off the rip, dude. From long distance run around into that is just like so genius. It's just the craziest thing. Yeah, it's fucking <clears> awesome. Where are we at? All right, we'll go back to farewell. Uh, Madrigal. This would be this the more ballady, not yeah, ballady, but yeah, like slower. It's just acoustic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Vocals. Got he's got a nice, cool uh, vocal melodies on this. It's a very soft, sweet tune. I think what it really is, it's that breath of fresh air that's gonna lay Sickness the ground. Yeah, the groundwork for it's the perfect. chaos that's that, gonna come. That makes next. a lot of sense. So yeah. you're laying out an album, and yeah, it's like a perfect placement, honestly. Yeah, you where it needs to that. be. <laughs> well, not every album needs to have every song be strong. You know what I mean? You gotta have those placeholders. I think this is a good one. Yeah. Um, mood for a day. Love Ooh. this song. I learned it on guitar. Yeah, it's really. Great I can't guitar. play it any. I can't play it as we speak. Not in its entirety, but there was a time when I could play it in its entirety. I want to get back down it's on a that. Beautiful piece. Yeah. At least you're honest, though. Yeah, I mean it's facts. So I just, did. You could have said, "Yeah, I, I could play it." Yeah. But that? that's the thing. <laughs> Steve Howe, he could probably play it now better than than Anybody? I ever could. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's his song. But I'm saying, 
that's just something that's so that, that about him that's so good. And Alex Lifeson has a lot of that too, like the flamingo style uh, guitar playing. And it's just like that's like a style I never got into as much as I would like to. Truthfully, you know, like in the sound and like just that style of guitar, so beautiful and so like so precise. Like you can't you can't fuck it up, you know. And it's like I listened to that song so many times. Just like ah, uh, and he just he never he don't miss he just doesn't miss. It's awesome. And the beautiful ending. Well, it worked out perfectly since we banged through like that little package deal. Yeah, we're all gonna land on the last songs of each album. So the last song. And there were both softer songs before. Yes. Imagine that. Again, setting the setting the groundwork for <laughs> what's to come. Now we have, on the last track to Farewell of Kings, we have Cygnus X1, Book 1, which we know leads into Hemispheres. Hemispheres, yeah. Book 2. The bridge. Well, let's just talk yeah. about just the ominous... Feels like we're on a distant planet. But it's kind of, well, the way I look at a Farewell of Kings, like, it starts with, with like just like life on Earth. And it goes into space. But like saying farewell to kings isn't necessarily saying farewell to actual kings. Like it's like almost saying farewell to this life. The, this life. The once was. Yeah. yeah. You know? And now we're seeing this going dun, here. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what the fuck what uh, you know, it's like there's it a monster wild. coming at you. And the, that's how I the, always thought. The the line, it's like they're cutting the riff in half four times. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're just it's just like starting through. in, the bass is like really far away, like a roomy sound, like yeah, it's like it's getting closer. Down, down. <laughs> it's like what? It's almost like a yeah. big spaceship is coming in. I would say it keeps coming in until it's right in front of your face, like do 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 do. Freaking, and then the drums come in. The same thing happens. Yeah, the same thing happens. They're cutting it, coming back in, coming back in, and all of a sudden the guitar comes in and the regular riffs start. Do 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 Right on it, dude. They have that whole instrumental piece beginning with doon 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 Yeah. Just like crazy just the journey. It has those like six, eight parts and it's like And each part of the song, it's just like a different part of like the voyage into the black hole. You know what I mean? As I said, I brought out the lyrics, I'm gonna read all of them. Cause I I did when I was listening to these albums I was listening I was reading the reading. lyrics simultaneously. You gotta do that. It's with, such a with these better, type of albums too. It adds so especially much, especially with yeah. these type of albums. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm I saying. I think you should do it with anything. With you anything, listen to. Man. not like every time, but yeah. like it's, one it's good time. to do. Sometimes that. you can't hear what they're saying exactly, yeah. Or yeah. You, and you don't receive the message you follow without it. reading. It. You follow yeah. it so much more, and you yeah. get into it yeah. personally. Yeah. It's like it's another, subtitles. You're dedicating another sense of your body to it yeah. past your ears. You really now learned. it's in your eyes. In it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you really it's in my to, eyes. To appreciate what they're saying. It's yeah. like, because a lot of time you're just hooked on melody. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah. how it complements the music around it. Because mm-hmm. the vocals, like, is, they work together. You know what I mean? Especially for this song. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's like fucking... Like, in the constellation of Cygnus, there lurks a mysterious invisible force, the black hole of Cygnus X1. Six stars of the Northern Cross in mourning for their sister's loss in a final flash of glory, never more the grace of night. Invisible, the telescopic eye, infinity, the star that would not die. All who dare to cross her course are swallowed by a fearsome force. Through the void to be destroyed, or is there something more? atomized at the core or through the astral door to soar I set a course just east of Lyra and northwest of Pegasus flew into the light of uh, Deneb, sailed across the Milky Way, this is what dan, dan, yeah. Dan, yeah. Dan, he's like soared across the Milky Way, they're like almost there yeah. you know what I mean, fucking on the yeah, just like takes a turn on my ship, the, was it Rossinate Wheeling through the galaxies, headed for the heart of Cygnus, headlong into mystery. The X-ray is her siren song. My ship cannot resist her long. Nearer to my deadly goal until the black hole gains control. 
spinning, whirling, still descending, like a spiral sea. Un- uh, uh, was it un unending? That's when his voice starts getting just like yeah, gnarly. haunting, and yeah, he's like screaming like it's like a yeah. fucking ghost and shit. Yeah. And then, oh hey Ursa, sound of fury drowns my heart. Every nerd is torn apart. Yeah. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like this whole song, it just like takes you on like. Yeah. It could you can just read that, and anyone would listen to it without any music at all. You, just the lyrics alone, it's, it's like a poem. poem. It's a poem, exactly yeah. A poem, just telling yeah. a story. It's a story. So good. Yeah, just story of a journey, and then they go. They're like, "Well, we don't know what's behind here, but we're gonna go anyway." Going straight they, into. They want to know what it's about. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It is fucking wild, dude. <laughs> yeah. Interstellar, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely interstellar vibes, right? <laughs> oh. Man. We'll have to have a part two for Hemispheres in a couple months. We won't overkill you on the rush stuff. Um, Final track to Fragile. Heart of the Sunrise. Heart of the Sunrise. Dude, this fucking... Glorious. The grand riff, finale. Dude. Space West. So sick. And the uh, just... The keys and stuff around it, you have the and it's like haunting. Dude, it's intense. And the beat really drops. Yeah. So fire. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, like thinking about it in my head, it just goes into so many crazy. It's just an amazing song. I'm not even gonna go into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bill Bruford is uh, he's a goat for that. Yeah, the things he plays, it's almost like he's creating his own time signature. Because sometimes the song sounds like it's just regular, but then you listen to the drum part, and it's almost like you don't get it at first. But then once you just like accept it, it's insane. Yeah, you just have to follow him. Yeah, like or try to. Yeah, but you know what I mean, like because yeah. you could like the drummer's following like, the music. He, the drummer's how, following that's the how music. He's hearing but, it. Yeah, which is the craziest part, because it's like, damn, he, what what's he hearing? Right, you know. No, I know what you. I know what you mean. It's like there's a there's a lot of different uh, musicians like that on different Same instruments. Same with Neil Peart, but Neil Peart is so more direct with it. Like he's like yeah, mi- literally mimicking guitar and bass parts. Yeah, you know, with the fills or, you know, there's so many units of fills in Rush. Yeah, now this song's cool. Fucking um, Chris Squire just laying it down. This whole suit, like when it goes in the breakdown, when the vocals start coming in. And he's freaking, he's like underneath them, just like, do, 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 yeah. do, 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 Like, it's a very yeah. busy bass line, very melodic, but it's like complimenting the vocals, like, super well. It's just like, if you're going to do that, do it right, and he did it with Perfect. complete yeah. finesse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then really, I just... You really can't get much better than that, you know? Then you have that one part where it's, like, going in, and all of a sudden, like, on a dime, doom, 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 yeah. doom, 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 yeah. doom, Just, like, yeah, they're just, like, a, that other band that just, like, on a dime, they can just fucking go into whatever they want, have no business being that good. Yeah, it is really crazy. And they, yeah, dude, like, you know, people only dream of that shit. Yeah. Like, each song on this album, you can teach a master class on any instrument for each song. Vocals, too. But every, everything, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Rest in peace, Chris Squire. Uh, yeah, dude. Another thing, awesome bass player. We did allude to this when we. What was it? I think we did yes versus uh, fucking Genesis? Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, we said all these prog bands, dude. The bass players more often than not are one of the leaders or like one of the head guys of the band. Yeah. 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 And it's only like you know when you're a bass player in this industry, you gotta be a little humbled. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of us are prog fans. Are prog fans because well, I mean, when you it's get like down, as self indulgent as you can get as a bass player is being well, yeah. a prog band. When you get down to it, like prog music is about like the rhythm section. Yeah, that's it is. the main thing. Like, yeah, 
that's the core of what makes it prog is like there's similar just crazy to, rhythms similar and to how jazz crazy, you know? how crazy we can get like jazz yeah, it's like a mixture of jazz, jazz and classical but yeah. adding that like metal rock, rock thing yeah. to it yeah. that's the best way you could put it how you just said it but Thanks. yeah and then the final before we wrap things up and we'll get to the thing i want to do my final commentary i was because i listened to both these albums in closed headphones and i've, I've noticed that on every rush song but alex lifeson's guitar tone is both like dirty and distorted and but clean. like as clean is like shit bro but mm-hmm. it's good like mm-hmm. i'm mean, in a good way it was bad, bad word bad word i should have said something else clean as the mr clean, clean. head <laughs> the bald head on mr clean's head there the magic go. eraser guy that's how clean his tone is, it is but even pure. then like th- all his chords because like he does like those choppy like things there's like fucking space in between every chord and note even when he's doing like yeah like i was listening he's like bah, 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 like so like clean and su- and precise even yeah and even like it's the strumming is so wild. even even with like the you know what I'm, even like the acoustic strumming you can hear every single it's string so when he precise. plays yeah, yeah with like complete clarity clarity yeah facts that's yeah, definitely uh how he plays type of thing yeah i mean as far as his like tone he lives in that like crunchy realm where yes. like you play soft it's clean if you're hitting it it's like a little bit like overdriven but yeah it's like he plays just so well that just sounds so good all the time <laughs> he plays with such i mean every musician in this in both these bands play with such like what's the word ferocity <sighs> they just as larry said they just don't miss <laughs> yeah that's really what it is. They're just on. They're they just, just don't miss. Yeah, they're just on. They just play, and yeah. it's just precise as fuck all the time. They're they're too good to miss. Like they don't they don't play with that shit. You know. They practice. They're perfect. Yeah, like they don't they can't afford to be less than anything. Like they are perfect. They don't miss. All right, so where where are we at with the ratings here? I think I might I think I might go first. Go go. <sighs> all right. I think I'm gonna give Fragile. I think I'll give it a 8.5 as far as classic albums are concerned. Because I think it's one of their most classic albums. I think it's one of the albums everyone, or at least rock fans, think about. Yeah. With that being said, it is not their like biggest songs they've ever had. Like if you're talking about from a logistical standpoint, quote unquote, it, you know, it I guess it like some of the biggest songs weren't on there. Uh, but if I put it stacking it up, e- either way, it's hard with like prog albums because it's like they might be so big to a margin, they might be so big to us and blown yeah. up to us. But prog is very niche, and they're like that's no ifs ands buts about it. They're, they're like on the. Like, all these bands got big as fuck, but, like, when I think of, like, Rush, I think of them as, like, Prague, Grateful Dead. Or, like, same yes, like, they have their, like, cult followings. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's hard, like, if you put that up to whatever album come up this year, like, did it, you know, did it rank up to it? I don't know. I would have to see, like, what else came out that year. But if yeah. you're thinking about it that way, it's like, Prague never got, like, the biggest commercial success. No. You know what I mean? What well, depends on what then it, then you can go on and say well it depends it on what you flower. consider prog but it's also like yeah I know and we also know. talked about things in the time compared to now yeah. I think it gets its flowers now yeah. more than it ever did earlier I agree you yeah. know what I mean yeah same with like metal and a lot of stuff it's yeah. like getting way more flowers than it did when it in its heyday yeah but uh, yeah on the grand scheme yeah where do you guys rate fragile uh well this is also like this is an era of the band like this is a lineup. Yes. Like this lineup of Yes is like the famous its own lineup. band. It's like its own band. It's you know the what famous I mean? Lineup yeah. Too. Exactly. Like, and I think I believe that was the first, or not the first three, but um, the Yes album, Fragile and Closer to the Edge, or the 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 trilogy of this lineup. But I'm not sure if the Yes album is entirely the same. No, I think Closer to the Edge doesn't have Bill uh, Bill Bruce on it. It doesn't. I thought that was Alan White. You might be right. You're right. That might be when they left Yes and played with Genesis for the tour. Oh and yeah, remember we talked yeah. about that. We did. I don't yeah. think he was there for that album. And well, then... he was, well because he no that he left after that album and then he joined King Crimson. Crimson. Oh, you're right. 
Oh, he did join Green Crimson. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, Wonder, Wonder Fragile come out 71? 71 or 2? 71. 71. And that was also the first Rick Wakeman album. Yeah, that wow. was who wasn't on the Yes album. That's what yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah. Those three Big albums difference. are... Those three albums of those three runs are probably my favorite Yes albums. But that was like the era of like their... That's my favorite. That's my favorite Yes, for sure. Yeah, same. That has Steve Howe. That's all. Those are the three. I mean, Steve Howe, I think, stayed with him, but that was when he's joined the band on the Yes album. Oh, yes. (laughs) Does someone else give a rating yet? Not yet. I'll give Fragile a... I'll give it an eight and a half. Is that what you said, Al? Yeah. Yeah. Eight and a half is good for the same reasons. All right. Who's next? I'm giving it an eight. Is it your favorite Yes album? Yes. I'll do eight and a half also. Damn. Same reasons? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Farewell to Kings. Where does it stack up? I'm giving this one an 8.7. 8.7? 8.5. 8.5? Yeah. It's great. It's one of my favorite Rush albums. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's Rush's best album. I agree. But it's it's up there. I Yeah, I'm going to give it 8.5 for me not being biased. Cause I like I like all Rush. I'm a big Rush fan, so it's like it'd be easy for me to give them all nine, nine point fives. But yeah. if you stack it up against like the albums that came out that year, possibly or like even their whole career, it's like yeah. Don't get me wrong, like holy shit, like coming off the gates at twenty one twelve, like yeah, badass. You know what I mean? Yeah. But twenty one twelve was like their biggest album at that time. Yeah. Got them to the dance. And then later, I would say Moving Pictures is Moving when pictures. it was like they fucking soared. Yeah. You know, uh, that's when they got like more yeah. commercial success. <clears throat> Agreed. Um. So yeah, for that reason, I'm not gonna put in the nine realm. I might yeah. put twenty one twelve in there. Yeah. Or possibly Moving Pictures. I put Moving Pictures in the nine realm. Yeah, I said it has a lot of their tracks. You know that you hear today. But yeah, this is what they called like the fucking. They called like this whole like sh- this run like, uh, Farewell to Kings and Hemispheres was like the epic years yeah it's like this is where they wrote their craziest yeah. tunes they've ever came out with yeah they were talking about recording la villa Strangato and they like tried to play it all one like uh Track. all one take, one take together and they just gave up because they couldn't do it, it and it was like very yeah. difficult separate. and taxing to yeah. record these albums yeah that's crazy to the point where they're like we can't do this crazy yeah. it's too crazy we can't do it anymore. yeah that's when they started making spirits of the radio yeah, yeah spirit of the radio and songs like that yeah it had the best Tom of Sawyer both worlds and they yeah. still were rush but they made more palatable yeah. songs for people it worked facts yeah, it worked yeah because they didn't do it uh insincerely you know what i mean it was still rush they're still epic yeah. There's still there's th- like the last song Witch Hunt on Moving Pictures is uh Witch Hunt. Yeah. It's up there in the epic like the way it starts like it sounds you can hear like the marching and like like torches and shit. I just imagine people like hunting witches. Yeah. And, that's awesome. Hell yeah. All right, me and Frank went. I will go and give that album Farewell to Kings a 8.5. Again. Wow. I'll tie him off. Wow. It's going to be neck and neck, dude. It is very neck and neck. It's, yeah. It almost might be a tie, depending on what David <laughs> wants to yeah. do. And then we said surprise yeah. bonus round. There's a tie. Yeah. I don't want to sway David's vote, though. He yeah. might do it on purpose. We no. haven't raging for a while. We're not, we're I'm not blue balling. I haven't got a bonus round in a minute. <laughs> I'm blue bonus. I'm going to do 8.4. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And that's oh, that. You just throw your pen? It was an accident. Right, I got right, excited. Right, right, right. I Word. had to get the polls in. We might be within one point of each other. A fraction of a point. A fraction. One cent of a point. One eleventh of a point. Eleven cents of a point. Is it a prog song? A crumb of a point. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> said a crab of a point. We are a crumb of a point. He said, them boys coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it was a <laughs> it was very close, a matter of decimal points. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. Decimal, oh, baby. Decimal. Almost a tie. 
So taking the lead, we have a farewell to Kings with thirty three point nine. To, to Fragile's 33.5. Very high-scoring albums. Wow. Probably wow. both of the highest-scoring albums we've done so far. Actually, yeah. no, I cap. The Russian Sabbath we did rate pretty high. This is, I oh, think... Oh, no, it, the Sabbath and Zeppelin. This I think is this second. is the closest, the closest we've, we've ever done. had. Yes, ever. ever in the whole Battle yeah. Supreme These are some pretty solid catalog. albums. We really can't say one is really better than yeah, the other. Yeah, it's hard, too, because they're it's both... It's half a point. Yeah. Because yeah. they're both yeah. in that what same... What mean? Yeah, who knows, right? realm of like you were saying like prog is like its own thing too like it's not like it's like you know what i'm saying it's not yeah. like a rating like two albums with a bunch of hits on it or one that has more radio success than other or less mm-hmm. it's like they're both just like prog bands so it's like in its own world you know i think the only one we could have in that conversation is possibly genesis like i think they like went on like more to commercially the most pop. yeah, yeah. Than probably yeah. those bands definitely I would say definitely. But this isn't a Genesis episode. There'll be one in the future. Yeah. But check out for yourself. Check out the archives, you know, if you want to see Get for yourself. It. But yeah, this is the closest battle we've ever had so far. Close. We have plenty of exciting ones coming up. Closer to the heart. We keep it close to the card here on Battle Supreme. <laughs> Every... <laughs> Don't half-ass it for these folks. Give it to me, Larry. Come on. Yeah! Have a good week, folks!